Imagine this, you get up, grab your morning coffee, and check the headlines only to see physicist Michio Kaku on every major network, his expression deeply concerned. You've never seen him like this before. One word keeps repeating terrifying, chilling. This isn't a trailer for a summer blockbuster or a new sci-fi movie. This is the situation of 2025, and that headline. It's tethered to a fresh, world-shaking date a dump. Humanity's third interstellar object has just been detected at least three isomayos. In the past few weeks, a silent, coordinated panic has rippled through the global scientific community. Five radio telescope arrays across continents, the James Webb Space Telescope, and every spare dish available have abandoned their scheduled tasks, swinging in unison toward a single faint streak of light. What could account for this unwavering urgency? The panic isn't just because Atlas is moving at a breakneck pace. It's because its very chemistry seems to violate the fundamental rule book of astrophysics, the one we've been confidently writing since the 1950s. Dr. Kaku, typically associated with calm, futuristic optimism, delivered a summary stripped of comfort. If these numbers hold, we're looking at something that did not form in any environment we currently understand. The implications are staggering. So, let's break down exactly what has changed overnight, why veteran researchers are suddenly losing sleep, and what the existence of this object may mean for all of us. The discovery, the event occurred on July 1, 2025, at precisely to 14 UTC. The Atlas Telescope in Chile part of the asteroid last alert system for Earth impacts flagged an anomaly. Normally, this system acts as our planetary watchdog, scanning for asteroids that might pose a threat. But this was no ordinary near-Earth object. It appeared as a faint blip, no brighter than a 19th magnitude star. To put that into perspective, the lower the magnitude, the brighter the object. The brightest stars in our night sky are around magnitude 1. A 19th magnitude object is thousands of times fainter than what the naked eye can see a ghost against the cosmic background. Within 24 hours, the minor planet center the official body for such announcements issued a circular that shocked global observatories. The object's trajectory was unbound to the sun. Its inbound speed, a staggering 58 kilometers per second, its closest approach inside the orbit of Venus. Why it matters, this object is not part of our solar system's family. It is not orbiting the sun in an elliptical path like an asteroid or planet. It's on a one-way trip a cosmic visitor passing through and it will never return. The speed alone is breathtaking. For comparison, Voyager 1, our fastest departing spacecraft, travels at 17 kilometers per second relative to the Sun. Atlas entered at more than three times that velocity. The designation 3I Atlas confirms it as the third interstellar object ever detected. The first was the enigmatic Amuamua, a cigar-shaped object that slipped past us too quickly for close study. The second, Tuiborosov, resembled a comet but carried alien chemical signatures. But Atlas arrived bigger, brighter, and crucially far stranger. The anomaly, Atlas is clocking in at 137,000 miles per hour, 58 kilometers per second. To frame that, it's 55 times the muzzle velocity of a standard M4 rifle. If you fired a bullet from New York City at the same time Atlas began its journey, the bullet would travel inches while Atlas crossed Los Angeles. The kinetic energy implied by such velocity is harrowing. If Atlas were on a collision course, it would carry enough energy to obliterate a continent. Thankfully, calculations confirm it will not hit Earth. Still, the speed is a clue to forces far beyond our understanding. The mystery, in astrophysics, the main way for an object to achieve such speed is through a gravitational slingshot stealing orbital energy from a massive body like a planet or star. But here's the problem, even the most extreme slingshot requires very specific circumstances, usually involving massive binary stars. When astronomers traced Atlas's trajectory backward into interstellar space, they found nothing. No massive stars. No binaries. No stellar nurseries. It's as if the object was fired from a cosmic cannon that doesn't exist. 
The second anomaly is where things move from baffling to deeply unsettling. Early, the James Webb Space Telescope spectrum provided a chemical portrait that was utterly alien. The data revealed a sharp, dominant spike of carbon dioxide CO and almost no discernible water ice. In our solar system and in every model we've built of others, comets are dirty snowballs. They are composed of roughly half water ice by mass. But Atlas is a different beast entirely. It's running at less than 5% H. Cho, with its comb of the fuzzy atmosphere around it being overwhelmingly dominated by carbon dioxide. This alone would be enough to rewrite textbooks. But it gets stranger. The carbon isotope ratio a deep-level fingerprint of where an object formed was completely off the charts. The number of heavier carbon-13 to the more common carbon-12 came in at 0.0 to 1. To provide some context, our baseline solar system ratio is about 1 to 89 or approximately 0.011. Atlas's ratio is nearly double that a result so far away from our solar baseline that it's described as a three-sigma deviation, a statistical term meaning it's highly unlikely to be a random fluke. This chemical signature acts like a cosmic birth certificate telling us about the star and the protoplanetary disk where the object was born. A different ratio means a different origin. Dr. Kaku's direct evaluation laid out the two most likely and equally innovative possibilities. Either, he explained, it condensed in a carbon-rich protoplanetary disk around a much hotter star, a place we've never seen but only theorized about, or something dramatically reprocessed its chemical makeup after it formed. He took a moment to add, both options were right what we thought we understood about the time scales of planetary formation. The third anomaly pushes this event to the very edge of our understanding. Officially, the object's orbit is hyperbolic the mathematical term for a path that is not bound by our sun's gravity. But there's a challenge, a tiny, persistent nudge in its movement. An impulse that doesn't fit any known gravitational model. After accounting for the pull of Jupiter, the Sun, and every other body in our solar system, Atlas is still accelerating ever so slightly, as if something is gently pushing it. The Jet Propulsion Laboratory's small body database the gold standard for orbital mechanics flags this anomalous acceleration as a 4.3 sigma outlier. In statistical terms, that means there is virtually no chance it's a measurement mistake. Something real is happening. Comets can, of course, exhibit non-gravitational acceleration. As they warm near the sun, ice turns to gas and shoots out in jets, pushing the comet like a tiny, unpredictable rocket. But Atlas's chemistry shows almost no water ice the primary source of energy for comet jets. The CO could sublimate, but the observed outgassing doesn't seem sufficient to account for the controlled thrust. This is where the conversation shifts to speculation and, frankly, to something a little frightening. Avi Loeb, the Harvard astronomer famous for his provocative theories about Aumuamua, immediately published a back-of-the-envelope calculation. He noted that if Atlas were an incredibly thin sail made of light material, this is exactly the kind of excess acceleration you would expect to see from the pressure of our sun's photons pushing against it. Light sails are a known propulsion concept. They work by using the momentum from sunlight itself, like a boat sailing on the wind. Dr. Kaku, ever the cautious scientist, stopped short of endorsing this view but resisted dismissing it. On the slide deck he shared with the press, he included one more terrifying possibility. We cannot rule out a type for probe scenario until we have eliminated all natural ones. And right now, we can't do that. For those unfamiliar with the Kadashev scale, it classifies civilizations based on how much energy they use. A Type 1 civilization has mastered its planet. A Type 2, its star. A Type 3, its galaxy. A Type for civilization a theoretical concept added to the scale would be capable of harnessing the energy of the entire universe. They would be beings who could manipulate the very laws of physics, almost godlike in their capabilities. The idea that this object could be a probe from such a civilization is what makes this event truly terrifying. So, what does terrifying actually mean in this context? 
It's crucial to understand it doesn't mean there's an immediate impact risk. Atlas will successfully traverse the orbit of Mars on July 12th, make its closest approach near Venus's orbit on the 28th, and then return to the impenetrable interstellar darkness once again.